Okay, please comment in the chat if there is any difference between uh, when I say difference is in term of the my voice that you hear um, through this Gmeet session. Okay, is it is it clear? Is it different? Is it sound smoother? Is it much more? Uh, does my does my voice sound battery smooth? Is it different from our previous class? Yes, clear is one thing, but I would like to know is uh, is my voice any difference? Is there any difference in terms of my voice? Beza sikit. Uh, mana satu? Uh, okay, one moment. Let me try this. Macam mana suara saya sekarang? Nah, tak pula okey je tapi mana, mana satu lagi uh, mana satu lagi okey ni lagi okey atau ni lagi okey Okay, sekarang option 2. Tadi option 1. Option 2 or option 1? Mana satu suara lagi okey? Ke sama je? Option 1 dah? Option 2 tak berapa clear ya? Okay. So, rasanya nanti awak boleh tengok dekat dalam recording kot. This was option 1 and this is option 2. Okay, so kita stick, cuba stick dengan option... Oh, sorry. Kalau dengar tu, <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Okay, so saya pergi balik ke option 1 eh. Yang ni, yang ni lagi clear ya. Eh? Ah, yang ni boleh jawab guna suara eh. This is option 1. Okay, tak ada respon. Tak apa. <laughs> okay, so let us have a look in term of uh, your entire screen. So, let us have a look in term of HCM, Human Capital Management. Kalau ikutkan yang ni, kita tak perlu role play. Sebab kan saya rasa kebanyakan daripada awak pun dah selalu dengar dah semenjak daripada zaman SPM lagi, cerita pasal macam mana nak dapat kerja, apa yang nak kena buat. Uh, hantar resume, resume cantik, resume satu page, resume sepuluh page, uh, resume banyak... Kala-kala, uh, resume banyak ayat. So, itu semua tu, kita cerita hari ni. Human uh, human Capital Management. Okay. Uh, so, this is what we going to discuss. This one doesn't really involve any role play. Because currently, this one is quite clear. Because this one is basically human interaction without uh, basically having to the need of basically involving with material with process pro, process of production no this is just basically the process of looking for someone to work inside gbi until making sure that you are properly investing in that person because you need to understand uh let us have a look at the chat then then what's your opinion how much are you looking to make for your first Salary RM1000, RM2000, RM3000 or even better RM10,000 Let's do a quick survey 
how much are you looking for for uh, how much are how much are you looking for in terms of your first ever salary working in the computer science okay not as computer science IT field Yang ni boleh komen dekat chat ataupun boleh guna mikrofon ya. Dua-dua boleh. Sebabkan saya pakai uh, earphone je. Tadi saya pakai just mic. Sekarang saya pakai earphone. No comment. Siap je. Am I, am I alone in this class? Hello? 3K. Okay. So, 3K for a person. But let's say, for example, for a large company and they have, let's say, for example, 100 staff. The most basic pay staff is basically 2,000. For manager, general manager, CEOs, they're going to have, let's say, for example, five figures um, salary because currently with what they, their expertise is and also the decision making that they need to do for the company, they're going to get more uh, more salary. They're going to get more pay. Uh, so, in terms of, let's say, for example, if your salary is 3K, the company decided, decided to hire you. They already, they're going to be investing 3K paying to you to make sure that you are doing your job correctly. Okay. So, in terms of that investment, uh, it's not such a small investment. It's a really big investment in terms of when we are talking about human capital management. And then, the thing is that not all people that is being hired inside a company generates money. Most of them are just to be there to maintain the daily operation. Like, for what I am during what, uh, when I'm working in, uh, in Felda, I was the system administrator. The system administrator generate income for the customer? Uh, sorry, you're not for the customer. For the company? No. But we make sure that the infrastructure is ready so that when people want to make money, when the staff of the company wants to make money, especially sales uh, salespeople, they could access to the system, gain the information that they needed, input what they need so that the company can generate money can generate revenue so when we're talking about human capital management is a big investment towards uh, from the company towards you but it just uh, it doesn't stop there they also this is, will be depending on the company because when we are talking about human capital management it's talking about their responsibility to the staff and also the staff responsibility to the company so what happens here is basically from the first day you start working in a company, they need to make sure that their money is being put to good use when they pay your monthly salary until the final date that you are stationed in that company. So that is what human capital management is. Uh, most of uh, most of the things is that uh, most common or basically usual practice is that human capital management or basically those who are working human cap uh, who work in the field of human capital management they need to manage the people that is working inside the company from the first day it's not from the first day it's basically from the start of the day that you send your resume to the company until you are considered as pensioner or pesara apa bahasa inggeris saya tak ingat cuba comment sikit dekat chat Apa benda tu pesara? Eh, sorry, not pesara. Pesara eh? No? Uh, pesara is usually... Uh, retiree. Okay. Well, until whether you pen, uh, you get your pension from the company or are you uh, are you retire? It's normal lah. It's basically in Malaysia. Uh, kerajaan, you become pensioner. Swasta, you become retiree. So, macam tu lah. Okay. So there are 60 slides, uh, we're not going to go through all, but basically half of the time until 11 o'clock, we're going to go through some of the basic information regarding human capital management. And then starting at 11, we're going to take a look at the process that is being, uh, those process that is being done during the um, 
assignment. Okay, so nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. So we are going to take a look at some of the basic things. We're going to look at the organizational structure, master data process. So when we go through here, then you can start uh, regretting about what you answer inside your midterm. Okay, my question was organizational structure and then suddenly you answer inside their business process. Why? I'm not sure. This is an open book type of test. I thought my questions are quite clear. I asked for organi organizational structure but some student answered in terms of business process. Hmm, not sure why. Okay, so let us have a look at the structure. So this is talking about some... Before this, we discuss that, okay, if you remember, Dallas production, San Diego and Miami are the ones who are doing sales. But then, if you also remember, I mentioned that those three different locations, those three different plants can basically purchase anything because currently each of the departments have their own purchasing stuff. So basically from here, from this slide here, so from here basically we will know whether what I'm teaching you is correct or not. If I'm not mistaken, it's supposed to be maybe there is some some discrepancy, something that is not really accurate, but I'm guessing we can make clear of it in this chapter. Okay. So basically we're going to have the same thing. We have client company code, but then we have personal personnel area. Basically, you're going to see whether you're going to be uh basically covering in terms of personnel administrative, time management, this kind of thing. And then you have personnel sub area. This is differentiate between the administration, time management. We're going to have a look at this in terms of more detail when we go to the data itself. See the examples. So from here, you can see what are the different departments that is inside each location. So we have uh, US here, Germany here, but then if you see here, let us uh, focus on uh, Global by US. We have Dallas, Miami, and San Diego. So basically from here, we see that the departments that is only in San Diego, we have sales and material management, but we don't have purchasing. So what is the difference between MM and purchasing is basically MM is creating the material. But if you want to purchase the material, San Diego cannot purchase. Miami can purchase and send it to San Diego. Like in terms of here, executive, so basically when we say executive here, this is basically all the management team. And then we have the finance department, HR department, IT department, MM department, purchasing department, and production department. Um, so this is basically making our organization, um, the GBI organizational structure much more clearer. If you see here, GBI Dallas or Dallas the... Sorry, uh, a little bit of flu. Uh, GBI Dallas, the, the main function of GBI Dallas is basically to produce bicycle. They are the production plant. So, it is confirmed here is that there is no sales department. There is no sales box inside Dallas. So basically, GBI Dallas cannot do sale. Their main, uh, their main focus is production. It's this one. As you can see here in terms of Miami and San Diego, uh, they can create material, but only Miami can purchase. Like what if you done with the chain lock part of the assignment, uh, when you created the chain lock, San Diego can create. But then when you start the process of inquiry, uh, sorry, is it inquiry? No, I'm guessing it's not required. Uh, uh, have a look at it. But it's the process of before quotation. Uh, quotation, purchase order, those things cannot be done in San Diego. It can only be done in Miami. Which means that when, let's say for example, San Diego, they need 200 chain lock. Miami, uh, San Diego cannot buy on their own. People from San Diego will need to make a request to the people in Miami so that people from Miami will basically purchase those chain lock for uh, and then it will be delivered to San Diego. 
So these are the different departments that is inside GBI. So move on to the next. If you have questions, please raise hands through the GMeet session. So if we look at uh, HTM, okay. Now we are talking about different structure of the uh, personnel. So this one is basically you just look at here. What is HCM personnel structure? We have different type of staff. We have those staff who are currently working for the company. And then we have the staff that is currently considered as external. Maybe they are not basically staff that is working in GBI. They are basically being uh, borrowed uh, from different company to work with GBI on certain projects short term so that after the project is finished, they can go back to their uh, to their original company okay and then we have retirees yes not being called pensioner so we're going to have retirees which means that after the staff has already uh finished their work they already work in gbi for more than 50 years let's say for example 20 you're going to be start working let's say you reach the age of 60 so 40 years you have already served gbi so afterwards what happened uh bye bye you are already too old for this company. Uh, you can retire. Thank you for all your services. Okay. And then we have different employee subgroup. These are being considered as, let's say, for example, the different uh, smaller positions inside the company. So you have, let's say, for example, laboratory assistants, commercial clerk, industry employees. So these are basically, kalau macam, if you are, uh, we are in the IT world, you have, Let's say for example, for example, programmer, system analyst, tester, uh, system admin, uh, those kind of different positions. Okay, so in terms of active, just now we have employee, we have internal, we have trainee, uh, external, those people who are currently attached to the company for a certain period of time. Okay, what does this mean? Uh, maybe we can do some a little bit of room. No, we don't need role play. I can just give you an example. Retiree, those people who are already retired, see the grey hair there. But then suddenly I'm noticing this guy is not really that old. Okay. So we have employee, internal, trainee. Uh, this one is going to be you in the future. Industry trainee. Okay. For example, if you want to know more about external, is let's say for example, if currently... Okay. This is a situation in Felda. Uh, yes, Felda has been using SAP for a long, long time. And then there is this one year uh, where MAS, uh, you know MAS, uh, Malaysia Airline, uh, Malaysia Airline, they needed something to be developed. They are also using SAP, but then there is something. Um, I'm not sure which... Okay, I need to lower my camera a bit. Um, I don't remember which module, so let's say for example, uh, they need to basically implement uh, something new inside their finance module in SAP. So what happened is that they reach, uh, they reach, uh, they contacted product, uh, Prodata, Felda Prodata for for help in terms of this implementation. It's not basically free help. Basically, this is basically considered as a consultation project. So what happens here? The staff uh, for pro data, what they're going to do is basically, okay, we're going to see who is going to be responsible for this project for FI implementation in mass. So we're going to, uh, pro data, going to, uh, Felda pro data is going to pick, let's say, for example, five people. This five people is going to be sent to work at mass for, let's say, for example, the project is for two years. So which means that this five people is going to be sent to mass to work there for five years. Uh, sorry, five people. The project was two years. So basically, they're going to be sent there working at mass for two years. So they are considered, okay, on the mass, uh, on the mass side, they're going to be considering them, the five people from ProData, as an external staff. They're going to register them inside the systems. What will happen here is going to be basically impacting towards, let's say, for example, the most simple thing is door access. Mm. Door access is most, the most simplest thing why you need to register staff inside your system. So that when the staff need, needed to enter or exit the mass premise, they can use their 
staff, uh, their temporary staff card to access their uh, to mass building. So that is for example in terms of what is external. Now, continue in terms of HCM organizational plan. So if you are already done your uh, human capital management assignment, you already maybe you are not familiar with organizational planning uh, organization plan. So when we're talking about organizational uh, organization plan, this is basically how the company is going to be laid out. They are, it's not just talking about organizational structure. We need to know in terms of each department what uh, what position are available inside uh, one department. If you are uh, if you are doing your HCM, you are currently defining two sorry not two three new position inside a department. What department was it? Anyone here would like to care to answer inside the chat? What department did you involve with when you do the HCM lab? I'm still waiting. Anyone here would like to comment? What department was it? Security. Okay, lambat sangat saya tepat saya jawab. So, you involved with what is known as the security department. Okay, what you're currently doing uh, earlier is basically you define three different positions. Uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken, is security guard, security uh, security guard, security manager, and also chief security, something, some sort of like that. So three different positions. So that is what you're talking about when uh, we are in organizational uh, organizational plan. Okay, so you create a group with function, a group of people with function. What is that group name? Security. How many people in that group? Not sure. How many different positions in that group? Three. So those are the things that you do. And then you need to find people that needs to fill up in those positions. Sometimes it can be either through interview or you just assign it immediately. If you notice, uh, when you do the assignment, what you did was you assign someone immediately to the position of chief security manager. That is what you done. But then there is also another way where you hire someone to become the security guard and then you promote the security guard to become the security manager. Okay. So notice that we are currently talking about when we, we are in the area of human capital management, we are talking about hiring, uh, processing that hiring, assigning a job to a person and also promoting. So we already covered four. And then from there, you also need to see, okay, we already covered in terms of organizational unit, position just now, person that needed to be that, uh, needed to be assigned to the different position, and also cost center. Cost center is the most important. If you don't understand what is, does cost center mean, it's basically from where does the money comes from to pay for that stuff. That is what cost center is. Okay, be clear. <coughs> And then you have job description. Finally, what does each position need to uh, need to do in their during their working hour, or basically basically job description? Uh, if uh, we are talking about the simplest term, okay. Cost center is basically from where does the money come from? Is basically it is in the it's in term of code. Kalau macam dekat sini UMP gaji staff. Uh, I'm not sure gaji staff, but currently, if any payment that is needed to be done in our faculty, the uh, the cost center, the cost center code is FSK one thousand. Okay, FSK one thousand, which means that any money that is needed to be spent inside the faculty, or any claims that is needed to be approved inside the faculty, will come from that account number, uh, that account code account code so that what happens here so that people will know faculty ni how much are they spending are they own overspending are they underspending or they just uh, they spend their money just right so cost center is not really in hcm is on finance 
Okay, this one don't need. Oh, I know, this one. Okay, now, if you look at here, uh, we have the client, we have the company, we have the personal area, which means that the different departments, and then we have the employee group, uh, which means that you're going to be active, retiree, uh, external. So external, if you notice here, you can either be junior consultant or senior consultant. Yeah, same as the one that I mentioned to you just now, it's accurate. Nasib baik benda ni bukannya ilmu sesat. Uh, if your company hired someone, you need to register them inside the system. They're going to be considered as consultant. Either they are senior or junior. Oh, okay, we have two. Here, retiree. We have pensioner and honorary. Uh, honorary. Honorary, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with the term. Pensioner is basically awak dapat duit pension lah. Okay. Intern hourly. Hey, uh, ha. ha hourly wage okay tongue twister salary scale executive so this is basically stating how much you're going to be uh, what kind of um, different packages of pay that you're going to be receiving as a staff okay what is the difference between this one? Oh, this one is that uh, this one is in denmark uh, uh, sorry not denmark <laughs> sorry uh, not denmark this is german this is German structure, so this one we can ignore. Uh, we are focusing more on the US stru uh, data structure. So, from here, Miami can only access this, San Diego can only access this, uh, Dallas can access all of this, uh, Dallas, Miami and San Diego can access, um, uh, can access all from group 1, group 2 and group 9. Where is group 4 and until group 8? Don't ask me. Currently it's not here, I'm guessing we are not using that. Okay, so let us have a look at the master data. Master data is going to be on, you guess it, personal number. Like your student ID. Like for mine, my personal number that is, hmm, personal number inside the inside our faculty is 01443. Hmm. My matrix number was, uh, I noticed it was CB. CB, what number, I don't remember anymore. Okay. So basically, this one is can comprise up to eight digits. So this is just in term of recording, in term of a unique identification that is your staff ID. What does this staff ID is being used for? Is to track on, let's say, for example, here you can see expenses, uh, expenses result, and more clearly in term of travel expenses. It can track on finance. Uh, it's not just on finance, on leaves. On medical, on uh, unpaid leaves, on how many children you have. So basically, all your personal info will be tied up to this personal uh, personal ID. Okay. Kalau tengok dalam uh, UMP pun UMP ada. Uh, if there is any way for me to show you the screen without showing you the exact input. Hmm. Tengok lah. Nanti kalau boleh, kita tengok. Okay, so from here, you're going to also have this information from this, uh, basically from your ID, you can see that whether are you working at Dallas or you're working at some place else. But basically in terms of here, if you notice, this person have two. Hmm. Very funny. Never accounted or basically never had experience with... Uh, people with two personal numbers. So I'm guessing that maybe one is internal, one is external. Satu sebagai pekerja GBI, satu sebagai consultant untuk syarikat lain. Not sure. But if you notice here, one is employee, one is project manager. When we hear the term project manager, usually this is being assigned for a consultancy job, which means that he is going to be working in another company for some period of time. Okay, and then you have info type. Info type. <laughs> Here's the thing about SAP. SAP tries to do or basically to label every single information that is related to human resource data as general as possible and they're going to call it as info type. So in terms of here, info type, you have absence. Info type 2001. So I'm guessing 2001 info type 
contains information that is related to employees not coming to work. They haven't recorded their attendance. So it's basically because of absence. So why are you absent from the company? Maybe because of vacation. Maybe you are on leave because of medical reason. Or you are on leave because you have a newborn child. So, info time doesn't really just cover our absence. It also covers on your permanent address, uh, res uh, residential address, your IC address. Those are considered as info types. Info types basically on address. Uh, info type on health. Um, do you have any critical illness? Do you have any permanent injury? Those kind of things. So, info types for you to make sense of it is just different categories of information that is related to an employee. That is what info type is. Apa -apa information that is related to you, the general category, the general categorization of information is info types. Uh, let us have a look at the next slide. Ada yang lain tak? Okay, let's say for example, info types are time dependent. So, let's say for example, this one here is basically on your address. So, basically you see here, 1, 2, 3, which means that your permanent residential address has been changed three times. So, example, time constraint. Another one is husband. Before this, you are single and now you are someone, someone, someone's man. You are married. Okay. Secondary residential. So basically, if you notice here, this is somewhat here. One uh, down, up, down. This one down, uh, up, down, up. Maybe there is a connection. This one is basically your... Maybe you have a second home or basically you have a second home but then uh, you also change the address. Your second home for the first one is somewhere in... The, uh, location 1, location 2, location 3, depends. Okay, so info type usually because just now I already mentioned info type is related to the persons, to the employee's information. So you need to basically, uh, basically you can see here, these are the different info types. We have info types related to hiring, to which uh, organize, uh, hiring, how you were hired to the company, organizational reassignment, have you been assigned to different departments in the organization, transfer as a, transfer as an active staff from when to when you are considered as active, transfer as retiree staff from which date to current date that you are already considered as a retiree, change in pay, I'm not sure whether this is related to remuneration. Okay, when I say remuneration, is basically a pay raise. Okay. Early retirement, if you are going to go for early retirement, any leaves, um, re-entry into company after you finish a project with another company, time recording, that is your attendance. So basically, if you notice here, these are some of the different info types that we have, different information. And then inside here, you have a, uh, the more detailed information. Okay, now we're going to move on to the ACM process. But for the ACM process, we are not going to be, okay, we're going to go through this, this, uh, I'm guessing every single thing on this slide first, and then we're going to go through what you are currently doing in the lab. Okay, so we have another 15 minutes for this part here. If there is something or basically you miss out or something or is it not clear, you can uh, re-watch the video. I'm going to re-upload this thing inside YouTube so that you can go through the video again if there are certain things that you are not clear. But before that, let me check on my WhatsApp for a while. I need to know whether... Okay, currently we, uh, currently we, uh, I have a meeting maybe at afternoon, but hopefully it's, it will still remain in the afternoon. Okay, so now let us have a look at this. This, this part here, I'm just going to mention to you what are the certain, okay, human resource is not that simple. I'm just, I'm just uh, stating this here. Human resource is not really that simple because currently what is happening here, you are currently 
in your work is currently involving staff, involving people. People have personal issue. There are good people, there are bad people, there are non-performing people, there are performing people, and then there are people who like to rub ass, and then there are people who don't care about the company. Hmm. See, we are human beings. We are being made different. There are some people who can prosper in the in working with the marketing department. Some people may not prosper there. Some people can prosper in the IT department where usually involves with jobs that is not socializing. Okay, those people who are anti-social would love to work in the IT department. But those people who talk a lot, uh, knows how to identify the soft spots of people when they are doing marketing, those people are really good at those things can work in the marketing department. Okay, like there's one staff that my wife used to, uh, it's not used to talk about, but sometimes we talk about uh, our history with Felda. Okay, my wife also working with Felda. There's this one staff. Uh, it's not that he is a project manager. He doesn't, basically, mm, I'm not sure what his background is, but what happens is basically, he's a very talkative person. And uh, not just talkative, you can talk at banyak bebel. Uh, he also is a person, people. Dia macam boleh communicate. Dia boleh berborak dengan orang. Dia boleh, uh, awak ingat, uh, if you you think it's really easy to rub ass with someone else, okay, uh, rub, okay. The correct term in Malay is basically kipas. Kipas. Kipas untuk jawatan. Kipas untuk markah tinggi. Jangan kipas saya. Okay. Uh, kipas untuk... Uh, tak nak pergi uh, kipas untuk skip events uh, kipas untuk masuk event uh, those kind of things so awak ingat uh, kipas tu bukan semua orang boleh buat siapa yang boleh buat tu memang dia orang patut pergi ke sales department marketing department memang uh, itu bakat tau bakat is a talent for someone to be able to convince someone to agree with them okay that is a talent and is something that I don't have Okay, tapi bersyukur dengan apa yang kita ada. Uh, the grass is always greener on the other side. So, uh, be thankful with what you are currently have. But if you're thinking about uh, personal improvement, uh, it's also another thing. You can go for that. You want to have better public speaking skills, for example. Uh, you don't want to be an introvert person. You want to be socialized. Um, practice. You want to... Push yourself, practice. It's not that to be thankful, but also you try to challenge them. You try to challenge yourself in terms of doing something. Uh, kat sini saya cakap, uh, currently I'm uh, I'm killing myself basically. Uh, saya cakap jangan buat tu, tapi buat tu. Lepas tu saya cakap jangan buat tu, saya buat tu. Lepas tu saya cakap sila bersyukur. Lepas tu saya suruh awak pergi training. Hmm. That's life. Okay. So what you see here, these are some of the basic things in terms of human capital management. So you have recruitment, which means that you need to find staff because we uh, companies don't get enough of staff. Especially uh, when companies are expanding, uh, more business is coming in. They need to recruit more people. But then you need to be careful of recruiting the correct people for the correct job. Okay. For example, if you see the memes, uh, there is this one TikTok. Uh, you say inside your resume you can do cotton candy, but when actually you're doing, uh, you're going to be doing the cotton ca candy in the actual, or basically you what you doing the actual thing. You don't know how to do uh, cotton candy, so basically please be careful when you do these kind of things when you try to promote yourself to get the job. Okay, and then we have. Time management. Time management is basically in terms of making sure that the staff uh, is being aware of what is their working hour. Are they being paid hourly or are they being paid monthly? Uh, are they um, are they working in the morning shift, afternoon shift, uh, the night shift? Uh, depends. This is related to the staff time management in terms of when they are working with the company. Are they supposed to come in at 8? Uh, are they supposed to go back at 5 or during certain 
month like for example Ramadan do they need to come in uh, much more early so that they can go back earlier okay but the thing is those kind of things eh, outside of KL it doesn't really matter hmm. kau macam dulu kalau ye pun uh, because of me uh, being a single person when I work in KL uh, we took the normal option Uh, before this, normal working hour was supposed to be coming in at 8am but during Ramadan, there is an option to come in at 7.30am so that you can go back early. But for me and my friends, uh, we come to the office at 8 o'clock in the morning but then when we want to go back, we go back at 8 o'clock at night. We're not going to be moving out from the office at 5pm because the jam... Uh, well, you get my picture. Uh, going back during Ramadan in KL, if you're going out of the office at 5 p.m., you're going to reach your house at 7 p.m. Right? Well, hmm. for mine, for my case, uh, going out is basically 5 p.m., reach home at around 6.30 p.m. And the distance between my uh, the office and our rental was basically around if i'm not mistaken less than 10 kilometers if i walk i can reach there in around 30 minutes but if i were to get uh, to go home by car it's going to take me around one hour and 30 minutes on ramadan so we skip it we go back after uh, after berbuka after the iftar eight o'clock 10 minutes to reach home hmm. makes sense right Rather than stuck in a jam for one night and one hour and 30 minutes uh, uh, burning fuel, just buka puasa dekat dalam office, just buy something, buka puasa dengan friends, and then go back home at 8 o'clock, 10 minutes to reach home. Hmm. Okay, time management. And then we have personnel development. Okay, personnel development, why is this? Uh, if you are familiar, when you go inside a company, then you need to basically go for training. Why you need to go for training? Because currently you need to improve yourself. It's not that the company pay you to do the same job as the first day that you come and uh, come in and report inside the company. No. When you go inside the company, after three years, you're supposed to have new knowledge, new skills, new things that you can do for the company. And then another three years, you go, uh, you can do an, a new things more new things more uh, more responsibility more pay more headaches uh, those those are the common things because your pay is going to be increasing year after year uh, after you already reach or basically you already uh, you already let's say for example uh, achieve certain uh, KPIs, okay, KPIs, Key Performance Indicator, we're going to talk about that in terms of performance management. And then, <coughs> and then you get going to get a pay raise. Now, personal development, you need to go for training so that you can do, uh, you can do more job for the company. More headache, more responsibility, more pay. Okay, and then you have talent management. Okay, because currently people are not being made the same. Some people can do more, some people can do less, some people can talk more, some people can talk less, some people can withstand other people, some people cannot withstand other people. Okay. So this talent management, we will basically, is just to make sure that the person can be assigned to the correct uh, correct work, uh, work or basically correct positions. Just that, talent management. We uh, the system will record what are some of your specialty. Okay, before this, there was this specialty that we um, you can type out an instant message using the uh, using keypads uh, in Nokia in uh, in a short period of time. Okay, that is considered as talent. Not many people can do that anymore. Okay, so performance management. Uh, let's say for example, another one in terms of talent management. You know how to be an MC, Mister Chairperson. Okay. You know how to be an MC. That is a talent. Uh, a talent you can basically do public speaking. So they can send you for something else or assign you to a different job, basically. And then you have 
performance management. Performance management, this is the one that is related to key performance indicator, KPI. Are you doing a good job inside the company? Are you supposed to get a raise? Or are you not supposed to get a raise? Are you okay with the department? Or are you supposed to be assigned to a different department? So performance management, performance management at the end of the day is just that you they want to see whether can you do the work and then will you get a pay increase. And then we move on to travel management. This one is common inside a uh, company outstation. Those, uh, that is the term outstation, travel management. Okay, outstation, uh, payroll. That is related to how uh, in terms of how much uh, pay that you're going to get because currently it's not just about getting one lump sum of money there is certain breakdown when we're talking about payroll okay for example you have your basics your allowance your benefit your claims those are basics for four different type of category inside your payroll okay and then you have personal controlling. Personal controlling, this is not basically you control whether that person is doing the correct job or not. No, this is basically just to look at the financial part of the staff. This is related to the monetary matter of the staff. Not in terms of what did you buy with your credit card. No, this is in terms of making sure that the money that is being sent to the staff or any pay cards that is being implemented towards the staff are correct, are consistent, are aligned with the data. That is what personal controlling is. Okay, this is what I don't like about online classes. I feel like I'm talking alone in a class with nine, with 22 people, 22, 23, 21, I'm not sure. Okay. So those are basically the creating, maintain a personal master. We don't need this. This is already talking about process. Okay, so it's already 11 o'clock. We already done with some of the basic information related to HCM. So we're going to take a five minute break. Okay, semua boleh pengsan dekat depan laptop kejap. Ataupun setakat ni memang setengah pengsan depan laptop ataupun dah memang atas katil sekadar pasang mic sekadar pasang speaker je pasang slow tu pun nak dengar kelas habis ok now for attendance please comment your ID inside the chat when the uh, when uh, when we start back at 11.05 that is considered as the end time for entering the attendance ok so Comment inside the chat, the in-call message, your matrix ID. Okay. So, ingat ke semua atas katil? Ramai juga yang dengar saya cakap. Saya dengar ramai juga yang dengar saya popek-popek ni. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, five minutes. Uh, five minutes break. <coughs> 